It's a beautiful day for a chess game, a beautiful day for a chess game. <sighs> Welcome back to Backyard Professor Chess Videos. I've been doing pretty good in Chess Club this last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago I went uh, three out of four, and this last week I went four out of five, so that's exciting. I've got a couple of games I want to demonstrate to you that I had. Uh, nothing super fancy, but yet really... Really fun games for me. I'm playing the black pieces since you guys said you wanted to see a few more of my games. I don't know why. They are a complete waste of time. And I don't know why he did that. I told him that's not the best way to do this. But he said, well, you play your game, I'll play mine. And I said, ooh, okay, touchy, touchy. <laughs> okay, then. No, he didn't really say that. This is one of those fun, casual games that uh, you have every now and then with with friends. And here he puts the cramp on me. And holy crap. This is the defect of the particular way I opened. This is, this is kind of a half Dutch. In other words, the French. If that's the French, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the French. Oh, hell, I don't know the names of openings. I just play chess. I need to learn those, though, because it's very important to sound intellectual like you know what the heck you're talking about, right? Yeah. So I'm going to bump up here to gain some space because he's cramming me. And it's going to be a chore to... No, not H. A. Yeah, A4. Sorry, I'm, I'm backwards. i got to think backwards now. And then Knight came to... C6, I bumped my knight up, and now B takes the C pawn, and really, he's just, he's just cramping me. And I hate playing cramped chess, but you got to learn how sometime, right? Yeah. Bishop G2, he's going to Fianchetto coming through the center, although he's hitting granite at this point, so maybe later on he's hoping to open the center, which would be Gloria in Excelsis Chesso for me. That would be fantastic. Knight f3, he wants to get ready to castle. I'm more than sure. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the opening, and I have just not done this very well, uh, I have to hit the front of his pawn chain, and I want to open it up right now. I don't want to be cramped for 10 or 15 more moves. I'm just not in that kind of a mood for that. So I went ahead and took the e-pawn. I said, all right, let's see what we can do. Miracle of all miracles, I was hoping he would push that pawn there, but he didn't. And I, So I thought, well, he'll retake it with the pawn, and that, that's going to have to work because it'll open this file. But he surprised me and took it with the knight as an outpost. Now, in my opinion, that helped me. This is good. Okay, good. So I took it with my knight. And now, of course, the F takes it. So, I mean, I'm still cramped, but now I've got an open file. So I've got something I can work with. That's what I was hoping to get. Something, anything to work with. Because over here is just closed. I'm not going to get anywhere in this. And the crazy thing is, he's got, he's got weaknesses all over the place here on the queen side. And then I, I didn't... Uh, I didn't do the, uh, no, not, 
Yeah, Rook 7. I didn't do a queen side attack on this. He comes out with his knight to c3. I went knight f8. I decided since the center is somewhat closed and there really are weaknesses all over the place by the king and he is not castled yet, I decided to do a kingside attack. So I deliberately gave him the signal. Look at this board. His king is in the open. Most of his pieces are over there. I want to come up this side because it's going to be the easiest to conquer, right? I mean, that's just basic, yeah? So I gave him all the signals that that's what I was going to do. I said, here I come. And he wants to hit one of my weaknesses. Actually, it's just keeping my uh, bishop down for the moment. But he is hitting one of my, one of my uh, weaknesses. And now I go knight g6. I don't know how I can make it more obvious. And he came back to queen d1. And I went... Rook to b8 because I decided what I was going to do. I'll show you here just shortly. And then he came to rook b6. <sighs> Cow. Now I really am crammed, right? I was going to bump the pawn and try to open something up, bring my bishop out and queen out and all that jazz. And he just beat me to the punch. I mean, that is that is great blockade. That That's... That sucks. So what I have to do is I have to Mickey Mouse around here. Queen d7. I have to rearrange my pieces to try to get him unblockading me, right? So I drop my bishop down. Now, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, I haven't looked at this really super duper careful. That would have been a sensational move. That would have really squirreled me. I mean, I am in deep trouble with that move, right? Uh, I, I'm not exactly playing stellar opening chess here, but man, that move would have tortured me. Crap. I, I mean, that move would have really tortured me. I would have had to bump my queen to here, and now my bishop's under attack. Not that he would take it, but boy, that's an outpost for a rook, right? Instead, what he did is he went bishop f4. And I said, dude, if you're going to give me the rook, I'm taking it. No joke. I will take the rook any day. And then he took the uh, the rook. He's got a uh, pawn that's blocked, a pawn that's deep, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to get that pawn out really, really well now. I went ahead and took the bishop too while I was at it. I exchanged. I said, yep, let's uh, let's get that little puppy off the off the board. And then he took the knight. So we're making progress, but unfortunately he he has really got me clamped. Truly. And I'm gonna get rid of this cotton picking pawn. I don't care what he does. I am getting rid of that pawn right now. Now. <gasps> now. I can breathe a little, right? Holy shish kebab. Now, he did something interesting. He pushed the F pawn, and I suspect he was thinking I was going to take it with the pawn so that he could push the pawn down and, and uh, put my rook on defense and then bring a castle and then bring his rook behind here and all that jazz. I got looking at this and I thought, you know, uh, he's got lousy queenside pawns. He's got good central pawns. But this pawn is, is a target. Yeah, it's guarded by the queen. But that pawn I'm going to keep my eye on. I took this with the rook instead of the pawn. I said, why not? That keeps my open file. Right? So he hits my rook. And I'm thinking, you know, um, yeah, my bishop's hitting granite right here. My bishop's a bad bishop, that's true. Uh, but I'm going to... I'm going to bump up here. And that is a 
double attack on a pawn that is only guarded by a piece who cannot prevent me from taking that pawn. And in fact, he has a good way of protecting the pawn by bumping this pawn up, if he so desires. Yes? He went with the knight move, and I went ahead and decided instead of being down here, hitting this, if I went here, I am doing a double attack against this knight actually a triple attack. That pawn and that pawn. The queen here is contacting that pawn. The queen here is much stronger attacking position. And I'm getting him in kind of an iffy position. Right? So I said that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that queen to b4. Then he went queen d3. He came up to try to guard the pawn. The knight is preventing me from coming here to check. True. So what I did is from here, I took the pawn and just threatened the queen. A good central pawn to take as it's blockading one of my central pawns. That is preventing me from using my bishops, my bishop, so I like that very much. He came to queen f3, and I thought, you know, I've pinned the knight to the king here. I'm hitting this pawn. I've taken this pawn. This knight can't move. He hasn't castled yet. Why not prevent him from castling from here out? So check to the king. I'm going to stop him from castling. He came back up to d2. And then I went back over to rook 4, check to the king, and he went to king e2. And at this point, I know my rook is hanging, but I have another target here that's a really bad, weak, backward pawn. And I have another really good target here that really isn't protected by much except the queen, and she can be chased off. And I have a fantastic target here once this knight's chased off. Yeah? But I've also got the king prevented from castling, and I see a pawn I can get. Right? So I bump up to here. Yeah? Now my rook is hanging, so he brings his queen back to here, but I can force him to move by going check. So I did. Check to the king. What are you going to do, buddy? He went to f1. And I'm on the seventh rank with the queen. And I know two rooks on the seventh are called pigs on the seventh. So I don't know if these are called mama pigs on the seventh or not. I don't know if I want to call the queen a mama pig. That might make her mad. <laughs> But I've got pigs on the seventh. This is wonderful, in my opinion, for me. I like it when I can get that seventh rank of the, oppo of the opponent. This is strong. This is quite strong. And I will illustrate that. If you can do this, it really makes your game powerful. I promise. It really does. The king came back here to g1. Now, I can't go check because of the knight. I can't take the knight because of the queen, but I can go check with the queen. And now I'm on the eighth and the seventh ranks. This can be deadly, really. He has this bishop that's not doing much, so he blocks it with the bishop. And I'm looking at this and I realize something. I have a skewer or a hidden skewer on the queen here. So how can I move that rook so that I can take that queen? 
safely. I have to do a forcing move. That isn't it. That's a blunder. That isn't it. That's a weak attack move because the queen can simply take my queen, right? So whatever I do, I have to make sure it's forced. So go check. That way he has to take the rook. Yeah, baby. I never thought I'd be happy to hear myself say, yes, he took my rook. Yes, but I'm happy he took my rook because that gave me the queen. Yeah. Now that's a good little tactic to remember. And it happened on the 7th and the 8th ranks. So this is working out really good for me. I have a hanging piece here. I have a real lousy pawn here. I have a real lousy pawn here. I have two pieces here I haven't put yet into this fight, but I will. This is working out really, really nice. Now where was I before I was in so much trouble? Queen takes g2, queen takes e3. Now, knight came to e2. He's going to try to take away squares that I can check his king with, yes? I have to use my other pieces, so it's time to bring my other pieces into this. A one-piece attack against three can't win. I'm just saying, get your whole... And I know, see, I'm being somewhat hypocritical because I've left those pieces down here because I've been trying to manipulate everything up here and it's worked out so far so good, right? He pushes h4 to give him room to maneuver because he knows an attack is coming up. Now, look. There is a king in front of a rook on a white diagonal, and I have a white bishop. Yes, I can take that pawn, but that skewer is just a screaming. Yeah? Well, he saw it too, so this guy moved his rook over. Absolutely. Well, I didn't get the rook skewered, but I get the check. I get to advance my pawn, supporting my queen, and hitting him with check. So I'm happy with that move. King goes to h2. I decide, you know what, I can get rid of that very weak pawn that's blocking my other central pawn and go check at the same time, so let's do it. Keep the king in check if possible. King comes to h3, so I bump over, check. Now this is an interesting situation because the rook is covering the bishop, the bishop is covering the knight, and the knight is covering the rook. That's quite a, that's quite a uh, group. So I can't just start taking pieces while I check him and putting forks on. Dang it. I wish I could, but I can't. King comes to g3. And I come up here to check. Forcing him back in the corner. Now this is amazing because... <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen this in a chess game. Now, it probably has occurred. So, I'm making a big deal out of it because it's my chess game, right? You know, everybody wants to make history, chess history. I moved there in check. Now, this is crazy. <laughs> my lone queen, who is hanging, in other words, nothing is supporting her, is attacking right in the center of four pieces of the opponent, and not a one of them can hurt me. <laughs> that is crazy. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. But I'm attacking, I'm hitting literally all four major pieces, and they can't touch me. Isn't that astonishing? At least it is for me. Come on, it was my game. Let me make a big whoop de doo about an unusual position. I, I personally have never seen anything quite like that. So who knows? I'm sure it exists. Sure. Well, the king comes back up to h3. 
again. Yeah, yeah. And I went e5. And he came to g4 because I'm wanting to open this up. I want these on dark squares so I can use my light squared bishop, yes. And I went to queen f3, coming back out chasing the king. And he came to king to g5. And I thought, man, he's getting away from me, but he's really not. Because then I bumped the h-pawn up, h6, check. And he went to king g6. And then I went to a bishop, e4, checkmate. So that was a fun little game for me. What it's showing us is, again, right to the end, central power radiates. Yes? This is, this is a very good illustration of that. Once again, the partial open file I was able to use with my rook to get into the king, and then the 7th and 8th ranks are so importantly strong to use to get to your king. So, there's your chess exercise. Remember, have fun, be good, do well, work hard, make lots of money, share the wealth as you can with those who are in need. Uh, there's a lot of folks in the world who could use some help, so let's pitch in and be good people, shall we? There's enough hate and mayhem and chaos in the world. Let's, uh, let's generate some enthusiastic kindness as far as I'm concerned. All right, thank you for watching my chess videos. I will see you guys in the next chess video. And no, I'm not bluffing.